This is Zoe Crooks of Real Combat Media. I'm here today with one of the most influential names in the sport of boxing, if not all sports. And she is totally in a league of her own. So please welcome the Wonder Woman of Boxing, Kelly Swanson. How are you doing today, Kelly? I'm fine. Thanks for having me. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to you. Oh, no problem. First and foremost, thank you for taking the time out your busy schedule to do this interview with me today. I mean, I truly, truly appreciate it. Matter of fact, it's, um, it's quite funny how the idea of this article and interview came up. I was actually doing some writing for the follow-up from the P- uh, PBC about what Brona and Porter we did in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I have a 10-year-old daughter named Zoe, and she came in the room, and she said, Daddy, are you writing about Floyd Mayweather again? <laughs> and I said, no, honey, um, I'm just doing some follow-up work. She said, well, when are you going to write about a woman in boxing? And it kind of startled Good me. for her. She's <laughs> already on the right path. <laughs> yeah, it threw me off for a second, and I was like, well, I'll do that one day. And she was like, well, if Floyd Mayweather is the biggest name in boxing, it has to be a woman in there somewhere because Batman – had Catwoman and Super, Superman had Wonder Woman. <laughs> so I immediately thought of you when it came time to write that article. So okay. can you please give me some insight on to what role does Swanson Communication play in the world of boxing and sports in general? Uh, well, I have uh, developed my company, Swanson Communications, to help uh, promote events and also athletes. Our expertise is definitely boxing. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, and fortunately for me, I have the opportunity to work at the top of the boxing uh, echelon, you could say, with uh, Floyd Mayweather and Bernard Hopkins. I work with many other great fighters, whether it's individually or on the events that they were fighting in. And our goal each and every time is to uh, promote the person or the event to the best of our abilities, uh, encouraging the press to cover the events. Um, I think the fun part for in boxing in particular is that the fighters all have great stories, and so it takes a good publicist to uncover that story and to be able to share it with the world through the media. So I like to, as a matter of fact, somebody on my staff is talking to a fighter who's going to be appearing on August 1st at the Barclays show as we speak, and uh, we're just learning a little bit more about the individual so that we can go out there and help tell his story. And and working together works. Um, If we know more about the fighter and we do take the time to learn about the fighter, then we, we have a better chance of encouraging the media to find the dis- different aspects about the uh, the fighter, the interesting aspects, because I think in order to be a good publicist, you need to have, um, you really need to have an edge to your pitch. And it's one thing to talk about a world champion, but it's another thing to talk about the personal or emotional side of the individual story. And fortunately for us, boxing always does afford that. There's always great great stories behind every great fighter and uh, Mm -hmm. we we always look forward to telling those stories and helping both the individual and the promotion great so how did all of this transpire for you being a a a lady a woman from buffalo new york how did all this start um well I, i grew up with three brothers and i was second oldest so any 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 sport they were playing, I, I, I had to play. Uh, and not that I didn't like playing. I actually liked it a lot. So, um, you know, very early on I learned about competition through sports and um, and in, in also playing sports. Saturdays uh, there was always sports on. The, well, the weekends were filled with sports programming. Um, and so I learned a lot about different different sports through watching television. And also Buffalo is a great sports town. We have the Buffalo Bills, which was my favorite, <laughs> and the Buffalo Sabres. And there's the Buffalo Bisons, which is a AAA baseball team. But back then I did. Oh, actually, the the uh, they used to have a basketball team. Yeah, they no used longer. to. Uh-huh. Yeah, the Braves. Um, 
So I think just by growing up in my environment, for some reason, I always liked boxing. I remember watching it as a kid. It used to be on Wide World of Sports in the afternoon or evening fights. And I always remember, like, really thinking, wow, I'd love to be there one day. <laughs> and um, I didn't really set out to be in boxing when I, when I moved to New York after college to pursue a career in sports. But one thing led to another, and I ended up at a public relations agency that did do some boxing PR. And so I was introduced to the sport that way. And then um, I went to, you know, one thing led to another. And uh, eventually I became, I opened up my own business, and part of our business does include boxing. And I've worked really, really hard to uh, receive the compliments that you gave me at the beginning of this um the beginning of this interview, we take our jobs very seriously, uh-huh. and <clears throat> it's not just fun and games for us. You know, we I come from a, a great PR background. I learned the trade outside of just promoting boxing, so it's not about being in boxing and then picking up the trade. I actually brought the trade to the table and was able to take what I've learned and create the formula and concept that I use to deliver whatever it is our clients need from us in the realm of our expertise. Yeah, because I noticed while we were working in Vegas and I was in a media tent, I noticed how every boxer, trainer, media personnel, how everyone loves and respects you, like in the utmost regard. I mean, could you ever in your wildest dream imagine all of this happening? Um. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I guess I did, you know, I always, as a, even as a young girl, never felt that I couldn't achieve anything that I wanted to or put my mind to. And so I'm just happy that people respect me, um, and respect the people that work for me. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I think that's the, the, the greatest compliment that uh you could receive is that people respect you not that not that they say oh they're so nice or aren't they fun no but they respect us yeah that is totally uh, true that's really nice that's really nice to hear great so is there any athlete that influenced you growing up in buffalo like a particular athlete i know i was a big buffalo fan growing up when they were trying to win the super bowl with jim kelly and um, thurman and andre reed is there any particular athlete that influenced you um, well, of course, I was in Buffalo during the days of O.J. Simpson, and unfortunately uh, for him, his story turned out the way it did, but I can say that he was a big influence for anybody who lived in Buffalo during those days of his, of his, um, of his, uh, I mean, Muhammad Ali, of course, I still love him to this day. But as far as Buffalo athletes go, I would have to say that um, Jim Kelly, I'm a huge Bills fan. I see that. <laughs> I've, been to, I've been to two of the four consecutive Super Bowls. You know, it's in your blood when you grow up there. You know, you go and sit in a stadium that's still outdoors and um, – and, uh, can you pause for one sec? Sure. You're taping this, right? Yes, ma'am. I can pause it. Okay. All right, just pause for a minute. I just got to read this one email. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> okay, so where was I? Sorry. Uh, you were speaking of influential athletes like Jim Kelly, who's probably one of the most underrated quarterbacks in NFL history. Right. Yeah, I mean, growing up in Buffalo, like the – the uh, the any, everything – um, the Bills just teach you to cheer for something and somebody. And I think that that relates really well to boxing because boxing is an individual sport and you really can't help but get a little bit closer or uh, more committed to the people that you work with directly. Like for me, I've been with Mayweather 10 years and Bernard Hopkins uh, close to two decades. So, you know, really – really feeling the passion of wanting somebody to do really well. That's and totally I think that that right. transcends to why I love to do what I do so much in the sport of boxing. 
And just like just like you mentioned, you work with B Hop and Floyd. Um, you work with some big names in the sport, even Riddick Bowl. Um, mm-hmm. And now that Floyd is the biggest athlete today, what has been your approach to creating balance for the images of those athletes, such as B Hop, Riddick Bowl, and Floyd, knowing that they have such huge personalities? Um, and we create a balance, did you say? Yes, ma'am. It's like creating balance in their life, like. How do you balance those guys out with their careers and everything and working hard for them? How do you create balance for the images of the athletes? Well, first of all, the three that you mentioned, and, and I will I will use Riddick's example as far as during his career. Um, they were very, very disciplined, and they wanted to be the best that they could be. And they And Bernard and Floyd still do. So they kind of help me uh, balance out the understanding and the need to schedule their interviews accordingly. Like it, it, they say to me all the time, the most important thing, Kelly, is that I'm comfortable. Okay. And don't over, don't over schedule me, don't under schedule me. You know, once you have, once you start a relationship and you get to develop it over the years versus maybe just working with a fighter on a fight, you get to know the balance because you're part of the balance. That is true. So they really count on me to make sure that that part of their career goes as smoothly as possible. Man, that is amazing. And that's a lot of balancing to do. I mean, I just think of the work you had to do for Floyd and Pacquiao and Canelo. (laughs) Oh, my God. I know they probably just gave you an assignment and step out of the way. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, they, actually, I tell the story when uh, when I knew that the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight was was uh, signed, and I got a call from Leonard Ellerby, and he told me, okay, Kelly, we have to do a press conference in Los Angeles on this day, and he hung up, and mm-hmm. nobody called me again. They turned it over to me, and, of course, you see the results. Um you know, I gave people updates, but nobody second-guessed my decision-making or my platform or my concept, and it, it felt really good. It felt really good to be respected. That was that came from all parties, both the network, the promoters, and the fighters themselves and the fighters' representatives. So um, that was probably, you know, that's such a great feeling, but I also know that we know how to do our job, and I think people know how that we know how to do our job. And so, again, that goes back to the respect factor. I'd rather be respected and trusted that if you're going to give us the opportunity to execute the work for you, whether it's the fighter, the promoter, or the network, that you know that we're going to deliver what you're looking for. Wow, that's amazing. That is truly amazing. I mean, but it's what we do, you know, it is what we do. So it it is a lot of work, don't get me wrong. We we didn't really breathe until maybe a week after the big fight. Everybody just been like worked worked really really hard, my whole staff, and I appreciate them for the effort that they put into it and then all my other PR colleagues did fantastic jobs and you know everybody gave it their all for that big promotion. Um, but there's a passion to it, and I think that that makes it uh, it makes it fun, you know. You get, you get to say, hey, do I really get to do this every day? Yes, yeah, and a hard It's a lot find. of work, but we enjoy it. So we um, we uh, you know, it's it's kind of like when you love what you do, you get mm-hmm. to do it, and you don't mind doing it. Right, and I hear Floyd and other athletes be hop. Guys like that, um, they always preach about the team that's around them. Mm-hmm. And I noticed you have a great team because I met Andrew in New York when they, I mean, um, Chicago, when they brought the first PBC fight there with Badu Jack and Anthony Durrell. And Andrew was ultra, ultra professional and so nice. He made my mm-hmm. experience go that much better. And we built a rapport from just from that one fight. So, well, that's great. Thank that's you. good to hear. <laughs> so, how important is it to you knowing that? Time is your biggest opponent to have a great team surrounding you. Well, I mean, I think it's I, – I, I, let me think here. The best answer for that would be that I have a certain standard 
that I expect anybody that works for me to live up to. And um, if you can, if you can do that, then I appreciate that they can to hear comments like yourselves. It means it's working. Um, so it's it's a it's a give and take, you know. I I, I I'm not an over I don't uh, over manage my people, but I do expect that they handle themselves accordingly, both professionally and when we're on site. You know, it's different being in the office all day and then actually being on site for a fight. Yes, it is. So um, I just have certain expectations and so far so good and if they didn't meet my expectations then they just wouldn't be able to work here great so also you've been in the world of sports now for over 25 years with swanson communications being established i think in 97 and your experience prior to that where do you see swanson communications going in the future from this point forward well, I think that the platform that we were able to create with the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight and the fact that we were the lead agency for that promotion has given us an opportunity to open up some more doors in sports. Um, I have worked on Olympics in the past and the World Cup, and we've done football games, and you know we are boxing experts, but we also represent uh, professional athletes with Karan Butler from the NBA and Sam Shields with the NFL. So I think that there is an opportunity we have right now that we might not have had in the past because of our uh, the exposure that we did receive from promoting that large event. And I look forward to seeing kind of what's out there for us and We'll take any opportunity that fits into our mold, and we feel that we can, you know, offer our expertise to somebody else. Great. So that means you're kind of looking forward to more expansion as far as other sports as well. Yeah. You know what? I've I've had a lo- I've had in the past a lot of experience outside of boxing, but when you become the um, you know, when you become good at what you do in the field that you uh, have the most opportunity in you know, your time does all of a sudden get occupied with taking care of the business that you receive from that notoriety. Um, But I think we could do what we do for any sport. Okay, great. And one of my final questions is pretty much now that you're a person of influence, a well-respected and admired individual in the world of sports, what what has been your biggest obstacle to overcome being a woman in a predominantly man sport, especially a combat sport like boxing? I think, I don't think it was an obstacle I overcame. I think that I had to mature in the sport uh, through the years so that I would be respected. Um, And that maturity might have taken a little bit longer because I was a woman in in terms of not my maturity, but in people giving me the same respect as some of my other peers. But I don't look at it as an obstacle. I think it happens. Um, I think it just happens with men and women in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Um, But I never deviated from being as professional as I could be so that because I knew it would come. I just, I had to have patience. And so I think that the way I handled it was um, I didn't get a chip on my shoulder. I um, I believed that all I had to do was do the work and show up. Exactly. And, you know, to be honest with you, like the fighters taught me that. Bernard Hopkins and Floyd taught me that. Oh. You, know, you show up and you do your job and, you know, good things are going to come. And every fight they have, they show up. And the record speaks for themselves. Yeah, because Bernard is 50 and pretty much still talking about fighting. And yeah. Floyd has No, Bernard dominated. is like, Bernard has taught me so much. He's been a mentor to me. I believe that Bernard is very influential yes, in the no. sport. I mean, I've never met anyone who's more disciplined than him. Even even when he's not fighting. I mean, Floyd's hugely disciplined. He's got a work ethic. 
yeah. uh, is hard to match. But they're both just my heroes, to be honest with you. I love working with both of them, and they have taught me a great deal. Hang on one sec.